What is happening, y'all? Welcome back to another Neo 2 walkthrough. And it's time for DLC number two, Darkness in the Capital. I actually like this one a lot. I think I like it more than Tengu's, mainly because uh, a lot of really, really good new sets that have been added in, so. I'm gonna hit you with that movie first. the new waifu. So, while this walkthrough is intended for Way of the Samurai, um, if you have this, you should have access to Dream of the Strong as well. And I do want to point out uh, that just doing a couple missions, like for example, I've basically done just a couple main missions on Dream of the Strong, just enough to uh, get access to some Fabled Umber site for tampering and whatnot, uh, just to set expectations here, because I do think that even though you can progress from endgame straight into the DLC, doing a little bit of work, a little bit of crafting will set you off a lot better. So in the previous DLC, we covered getting some uh, divine items pretty early. Uh, I'm actually going to be running with the One-Eyed Dragon set here. Pretty basic stuff on this, haven't like pimped it out or anything. Um, still don't have a Magatama, so instead just running generic accessories, uh, and then I crafted up these. Now these are where I basically poured all of my Umber Sight. Obviously you're going to want like an attack bonus on whatever you're using, so these are Strength Weapon, hence I went for Strength, Break, Key Damage, Life Drain, um, all that stuff. And all of this is very easy to get with just, you know, using Tempering, uh, doing your, your daily missions over here to get access to Umber Sight, doing a couple of the main story missions to get Fabled Umber Sight on the next difficulty. Um, so, you know, the point here is make sure that you gear yourself out before going into the DLC and you'll have a much, much better time than if you hadn't. So either way, let's get started on the first one, Suzune in the Flames. This one just has uh, two Kodamas, no locks of hair or anything. It's actually kind of a mini mission. There's really not much to this one. Um, we're also going to be doing the walkthrough with the new fist weapons as well. Uh, so another thing I want to point out is as opposed to the traditional style of walkthroughs I do for these where I get every single item, uh, because we are progressing to the point in the game where I would expect most of you to be self-sufficient, instead we are going to focus on uh, getting the key items. So things like Kodamas, Hairlocks, Hot Springs, all that stuff that you need to get achievements. And um, you know we're not going to be worried about getting every single chest because a lot of stuff it's just it's random loot uh, so over here there's a couple enemies you can fight and just a random thing but just to kind of show off the claws a little bit because these things are spicy I say that as I'm about to my ass beat go right in this building and then swing around of this real fast go up
Uh, for other things I have on, we have on an Oni B, just to be able to get Element on Demand. We have on Nupepo for the obvious damage buff that it provides, and then we have on a uh, Kozuki because it shatters key. We are running Atlas Bear as our uh, our Guardian Spirit here. And this is the main reason to go up. Just kick this down, that way the fire is put out. Ooh, what kind of Magatama does that? Damn. Need to get a, a green. Green Magatamas are the good ones. So a couple other things in here if you want to grab it. Um, downstairs we got a chest. Come on, get off that wall. There we go. Now we get to see our first new enemy of the DLC. Which the name, I still don't have their name remembered. It's like Ogo... Ogo Demarus or something. I just call them Freaky Carts. Freaky guard. They are weak to fire. Uh, there's actually an achievement surrounding these guys where you gotta get them to... You gotta knock the Amrita out of their cart. Let me go! Just behind this, we have our first Kodama. And our second Kodama is just ahead, right here on the left hand side, by some Oni Bees. That's okay, still got the water buff, that's what we wanted. So anytime you're gonna run through fire, you can usually just go through a bucket first, and you'll notice they have a little buff that looks like drips. That will, uh, basically that buff will slowly go off instead of you taking damage. So boss is that way. Uh, don't worry about that just yet. Instead we're going to get a shortcut back over here. I never touched on level. Uh, I am at, at 180. Should be around here if you've done just a little bit of New Game Plus and all the DLCs. So one stat should be maxed out to 99 by now, that being your primary, of course. Uh, beyond that, try to have A toughness, B agility. And then here on out, everything else I have is being knocked into either uh, toughness, or excuse me, uh, constitution or key, just to help get those up to some higher baselines. So hit the shrine so that you're nice and rested. And then we are up against Minamoto. This is the waifu you saw from the trailer. Um, pretty interesting fight. She can summon yokai uh, in the encounter to attack you. As she summons yokai, that is going to be your biggest window to get some damage in. She has some grapple moves that you either want to circle behind her to avoid completely or just kind of run and back up. Uh, she has a purity laser beam blast type thing. You're going to want to just avoid that or block it. 
Um, and this can definitely be a challenging fight if you go into it unprepared. So we're using Barrier Talisman for key. We're using Protection to mitigate some damage. And then, of course, Quick Change Scroll uh, so that in the event that we do die, we have a second chance. There's phase two, just to show it a little bit. She has uh, like big purity swings on the blade here. So, biggest thing is you want to try and be very careful about when you heal. As you can see, she'll keep charging. Come on. Trying to get off that heal. There we go. There we go. And you don't actually need to kill her, as you can see. You just gotta get far enough to where uh, you've, you know, done roughly three quarters of her health and the fight will wrap up. On lower difficulties, you probably won't see a lot of her moves, like the grapples and whatnot, simply because, you know, her health pool isn't as aggressive, but fighting this on uh, Dream of the Demon or Wise, or even Strong to a lesser extent, she's going to be a lot more deadly, especially her grapple moves. I don't think we saw her do any of the grapples there, just because my opening damage was strong enough to push her into phase two. Uh, and there's also quite a few unique abilities you can get off of her. Um, in particular, let me see here. So there's Severing Spin and then Sacred Bird Flight uh, that you can get off of her. Both of those really cool abilities. So you can farm her here or alternatively there is a, a mission where you'll be able to fight her much later. I would suggest just fighting her here because, you know, you can literally just reload it uh, and then you're you're back over at that shrine right there. So much easier fight to, to run in and jump on that boss and continue fighting. So after that... We have access to Blighted Gate, our next main mission. Um, about it. So, the next mission is quite long with nine Kodamas, two hairs, one hot spring. Uh, so, we are going to wrap this one up here. If you haven't yet, I would suggest taking the time now to go and, and kind of do some of that prep work that we talked about. Uh, we also got some pieces of one of the new sets that are in the game just to show that off very quickly here. The Imperial Ward set. Uh, it's a set, even though she uses just the, the Sacred Blade, she uses dual swords as well. So Sacred Bird Flight damage is up, uh, key recovery speed. And as you can see, we have some purification bonuses here. So an anima bonus against purified and 15% accumulation. And then the new thing, counter yokai tactics, uh, basically just more damage versus yokai. So kind of a questionable set bonus simply because we're not always fighting just yokai. So it's a set that's only, you know, it's going to kind of fall off in any battles against humans, obviously. But... Um, it does have Soul Core Box, so if you are a dual sword person, um, you know, just having that Soul Core Box along with a uh, Magatama, uh, you can just pick up that two-piece set bonus for some extra attack and defense if you're running dual swords, which is quite nice. Very similar to the, the flute from the final boss of the last DLC. So, either way, stay tuned. I know this one was a little bit shorter, but we're going to be doing um, an episode for Bladed Gate next. And then after that, we'll probably do one, uh, jump straight into Palace of the Dam, knocked out the main missions, and then we'll go after all the side missions. So, stay tuned, and I'll catch you all soon with more.